In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix red skin and sunburn with only a couple of steps. Okay, so let's start by creating a duplicate of the background layer. So I'm just going to highlight that and press Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC. I'm just going to rename this to Red Skin Fix. Now we need to convert that into a smart object. I'm going to right click and choose Convert to Smart Object. And this is just so that we can have non destructive tweaks of the color adjustments after the fact. Just makes it a nice little safety net. And we'll go to Filter and choose Camera Raw Filter. Camera Raw has got a really good HSL color selection and we can use that to adjust the red skin tones. You can do this within Photoshop, but I just find this is more powerful for quite extreme examples. So to start off with, we're going to target the red slider in the hue section and we'll start pushing it to the right, which will move those skin tones away from the magenta pink color they, they are more towards an orange. And as you can see, the pink tones going away but his skin still left very saturated and orange. I'm going to keep going. I can push this quite far, I think, on this particular model because it's quite severe. I'm going to stop around there, so I'll leave it at... Let's just make it a nice round 60. So now what we've got is an overall very saturated orangey skin tone, which we'll now deal with by going to the saturation tab and still sticking with reds, even though visually you might think it's orange, we'll still stick with a red slider. But this time we're going to push it to the left to slowly start desaturating. Now you've got to be very careful desaturating skin tone because if you cross over the threshold of it starts to get into grey, if you, if you go too far, I'll show you an example. If I push this too far, you'll notice the skin tone is now is looking very unnatural and grey, which you really don't want. So you've got to be super careful that you don't push it too far. I don't think I'm going to be able to get away with any more than minus 30 or 35 or on this one. So we'll leave it there. Okay. Let's just click OK for the moment as that first step. Now already that's made a huge difference. But there's a couple of things that I'm noticing that we just need to address also. One is the fact that his lips look very pale. On model or subjects with this kind of skin tone, generally your lips will still retain a bit of red to them, which has been completely removed with our first step. So to fix that, we just need to click on the layer mask for the smart filter Make sure that black is our foreground color. I'm going to put the opacity down to 10% and just gently brush over the lips a few times just to bring back a little bit of the redness that will be present on the lips. There we go. Just to bring back some of that realism. Now, two other things I'm noticing here that I'd like to fix also is the area of skin around his neck, where his Adam's apple is, and also around his eyes are quite yellow. So I'd just like to do another adjustment layer to quickly fix that yellow. And we're going to create a hue saturation for this one. So once you've created that adjustment layer, change the drop down to yellows because we know we're going to target the yellow tones. And we'll push the hue slider to the left, which is going to push the yellows more towards the red or warm side. And as you can see on his chest, on his neck area, sorry, and around his eyes, it's now blending in more with his overall skin tone. I'm going to stop about there. Press Command I on the layer mask to invert it because we only want to paint it back in the areas that we want to, otherwise, it'll affect the background. So, with our layer mask selected, we'll make sure white is our foreground color. And with quite a high opacity brush, I'm now just going to paint around the affected areas, so around his eyes. And you can see that yellowness is going away maybe a bit round his chin and on his neck area. And you can see that now is blending away nicely into his skin tone. And actually we'll do a bit on his ear because that looks quite yellow also. Okay, so that's taking care of the yellowness. Now, you could quite happily call that done. I think that's looking really good at the moment, but I'm just going to do a last little bonus step, which is to create a curves adjustment layer, drag it up slightly from the middle, Command and I to, on the mask to invert it. And with a low opacity brush, with white as your foreground color, low opacity or flow, it's up to you, whichever one you want to use. But I'm essentially now just going to target some of these darker spots, like on the top side of his head here. And we're in effect dodging these out. It's similar to just dodge and burn technique. I'm just using this to lighten a few of those darker spots. There's also one across his nose. 
Now, you don't want to go too far with this because it's not a portrait retouch or anything like that, so we don't want to target every little speck of dark blotchiness. We just want to lift a few of these areas. There's one just underneath his mouth on the right-hand side here, near his chin. Just a couple of darker spots that I think were exaggerated with the original sunburn. You can completely bypass this step. It's not necessary, but it's just a little bonus tip to get slightly more even tone overall. And that's done. So if I show the before and after, I mean, that was extremely bad sunburn. That was a really severe example of red skin. And we've very quickly and easily managed to turn it into that with almost no effort and very minimal masking. And that's how I would tackle a serious red skin problem in Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs>